So there has been a huge cultural shift over the last decade. Today, we care far less about ownership and far more about access. I don't own a car, and I don't want to own a car. I want to push a button on an app and have a car pull up and take me wherever I want to go. If I want to go somewhere on the weekend, I want to you know, I have access to hundreds of different choices of cars that I can choose, whether it's a convertible or a pickup truck. And this is all made possible by this network of people who are making their cars or homes available and taking advantage of extra inventory that they have. On the flip side, as a, as a driver, if I have a car, I can monetize that and I can drive around, and I can give rides, and make a living. And more and more people are making a living this way. Similarly, I can let other people drive my car uh, for something like Get Around. And these, these apps and these peer-to-peer -peer networks have changed our lives. But they're not really peer-to-peer -peer networks, are they? Uber, Airbnb, multi-billion dollar companies that sit in the middle of every single transaction. And so the crazy idea we have at Origin is trying to enable true peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, not peer-to-giant corporate monopoly to peer marketplaces. And the question we're asking ourselves every day at Origin, and the question I want you to think about today is this, is what if? What if we could replace every one of these multi-million and multi-billion dollar companies with open source protocols which aren't owned or controlled by anyone? What if instead we could create marketplaces which are governed by a set of open and fair and transparent rules instead of the whims of these corporate rulers? And there's four big reasons why this is important and meaningful for the world. First is really obvious. If we can cut out the middleman, the fees go with it. Both the buyer and the seller can get a better price. Secondly, we can redistribute the value to the people who are actually creating the value in the network. I had a, a ride uh, a while back with a driver. He was the 30th driver on Uber, and he's still driving for Uber today. And he's complaining because he's making less money today than he was before. And when Uber IPOs for billions of dollars, that guy's not going to see a penny. One of the exciting things about blockchain is the chance to redistribute the value more equitably to the people who are actually creating the value in the network. We can also reduce the single point of failure and promote open commerce. We've seen companies like Uber and Airbnb get banned in cities all over the world, whether it's uh, Airbnb getting banned in Japan or heavily regulated in San Francisco and New York, or Uber being banned in London, Vancouver, Austin, Texas for a while. And so it's demonstrated what happens when you have that single point of failure where everything can be shut down in one fell swoop. And lastly, we can serve the two billion people on this planet who aren't welcome on these centralized marketplaces for the simple reason that they don't have a bank account or a credit card and are unable to participate on these global marketplaces. So what we're building at Origin, there's actually three parts to it. We have smart contracts, which are governing the rules of the marketplace. And then we have developer libraries, Origin.js, which is JavaScript library, which abstracts away all of the complexity of, of building on the blockchain. And then we have our own DAP, which I'm going to give you a demo of today, to show how you can actually buy and sell with other people without any intermediaries whatsoever. We are live on the Ethereum mainnet. Uh, we launched end of last year, uh, and this is live, so you guys um, are welcome to check this out. We're also going to be announcing our marketplace creator on Monday, so you'll, you'll get a sneak peek at this. Basically, we're making it really, really easy for anyone who wants to create their own decentralized marketplace to be able to get up and running in five minutes or less. You can run it on your own domain, put your own logo on it, your own branding, and filter it to your own listings. Uh, and you can have a decentralized marketplace that serves your particular uh, niche or vertical. 
I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we've been working on for the past year. One of the, the most important things we started on was self-sovereign identity. If you want to buy and sell with strangers on the internet, it's really, really helpful if you have some sort of idea who these people are and what their reputation is. But we didn't want it to be something that we controlled. We wanted it to be something that you controlled, self-sovereign identity. So we've done a lot of work in this area where you can have trusted parties that can offer attestations on your, par on your behalf and sign um, that you are um, a certain person or uh, digitally verify your identity. And then you can publish that on the blockchain as your public Ethereum profile. We've also worked on making chat, uh, decentralized chat, where you can send a message to the person that you're thinking of buying something from or, or ask questions. And what, what we did was really interesting. We used Ethereum for the signing, so you get all of the security of Ethereum. But then we use IPFS as the transport layer. And so this means that we can make it instant and free. And so I'll demo that for you today as well. Of course, we use smart contracts as the escrow to manage the flow of funds. And so you have these smart contracts which hold the money safely during the, throughout the transaction process so that it's safe for both the buyer and the seller. We're also launching our own mobile app, which will allow people to confirm their transactions right from the mobile device. One of the reasons this is really important is when there's no central server, there's no one to send you an email and tell you when your item was purchased. And so the, the mobile app, one of the main things it does is just lets you know about activities that happen on the blockchain that are relevant to you. So we can send you notifications, let you know, hey, there's, you've got a message, uh, or for something that you need to respond to. This is live in the App Store today, by the way. We're going to be announcing it next week as well. We'd love for you guys to, to check it out. And so with that, let's switch over and I'll actually give you a live demo of what it looks like to buy or sell without any intermediary in between. Can we switch over? So this is our DAP. This is live on the Ethereum mainnet today. Uh, and so you can go to dap.originprotocol.com and you can see the types of listings that people in our community have put up for sale. And you can actually post your own listings, and you can actually buy these uh, using Ethereum yourself. And so there's all sorts of unique experiences and items that you can buy. Um, for this demo, I'm going to actually switch over to the Rinkby network, just to make it a little bit faster. But it's exactly the same uh, experience, no matter which network you're on. So here we are on RinkB, and I've set up two accounts here on MetaMask, one representing the seller and one representing the buyer. And so the first thing I want to do is set up my profile. I'm showing up here as an unnamed user. This isn't very compelling uh, if I want people to buy from me. So I want to add a little bit of information about myself. This is all going to be stored on IPFS, and then the content hash of that is going to go and be published on the blockchain and linking my identity to this Ethereum wallet that I'm using. I can add a profile picture. <laughs> All right, so now at this point, I have, uh, I've added a little bit of information about myself, but I can also verify some information here. So I can add my email address, for example. And what this is going to do is send me an email with a code. You've all been through this flow before. You know how it works. But it's going to send me an email. I can check it here on my phone. There we go. We've, I've been able to prove that I control this email address. And now that I've done that, I can publish this on the blockchain. And so here, we're not actually going to publish your email address uh, to the blockchain. Instead, what we'll publish is 
the fact that Origin has verified it and, you, and verified that email address. Although your public information, your, email, your name, et cetera, can be uh, shared publicly on the blockchain. So I can confirm this. It's going to pop up MetaMask. I'll confirm this. And there we go. So now I have a profile on Origin. So now I have that. Let's go and put something up for sale. All right, let's just put it up for one ETH. It's a bargain of a deal. I can pick some pictures. I'll post this. Now we have this idea of boosting. And so everything on Origin is free. There's no transaction costs other than the gas costs you're paying to the fair miners. But we do have this optional boosting that you can do. And what that allows you to do is incentivize other marketplace operators to feature your listings. And so here, I could, if I had OGN tokens, I could boost those as a reward for anyone who helps me sell this listing. So I'm going to leave it at zero for now. Um, but if I had some OGN in this wallet, I could boost this listing, and it would increase the odds of it getting picked up by someone. I can review it. And then it's going to pop up MetaMask again. We'll confirm this, and after a moment, we will have a listing that will be live on the Rinkby network. Now, you can do the exact same thing on uh, the mainnet as well. While we're waiting for that, let me switch over. Okay. Oh, here, we prompt you to enable notifications. Again, there's no centralized server to send you an email, so we, can, uh, we use browser notifications to, so I can get updates if any one of you wants to go and buy my one ETH Tesla. Uh, you're welcome to do that. You can go to see our listings. With any luck, it's going to pop up. Sometimes it takes a second. We also have messaging. So let's look at this real quick. So like I said, we're using your Ethereum wallet to do the signing, but we use IPFS for the transport. There's a couple things that were really important to us when we were designing out the, our messaging system. We didn't want you to have to pay any money to send a message, um, but we wanted it to be encrypted end to end. And we wanted it to be instant. And one of the things we discovered is we could, use, we could create an Ethereum key um, uh, ephemeral key, and we could use that instead, so now you don't have to pop up MetaMask every time you send a message. And it also allows you to loop in an arbitrator if anything goes wrong. So this is really important for us. So you could be messaging back and forth. As long as the trans everyone's happy, no arbitrator needs to be involved. If either the buyer or the seller complains, the funds are safely locked up in a smart contract. The arbitrator can be looped into this thread, and you can see the entire ch signed chain of messages that were sent back and forth, and then they can issue a judgment on who gets the funds in the case of that. So for right now, Origin is the sole arbitrator, um, but you can imagine a world where you would have a more decentralized network of jurors who would be able to um, make a decision in case of dispute. Um, lots more that we could do here, but I want to just encourage you to check this out for yourself. Go to uh, the DAP. It's, again, it's just dap.originprotocol.com uh, and play with us. We'd love to have uh, you experience this for yourself. Uh, and with that, can we switch back to my slides? So in the few minutes I have remaining, I just want to talk a little bit about what it's like to build on a web-free stack. The space is, is very nascent. It's still very new, and there's a lot of unique challenges to building in the space, as many of you in this room know um, full well. One of the, the main problems we have and it's, is the volatility of, of the currency. So today, 
you can only buy or sell using Ethereum on our marketplace. The problem with that is what if I book your apartment for six months from now? I don't know if the price of Ethereum is going to go up or go down, but I am pretty sure it's not going to be the same price as today, and that means that either the buyer or the seller is going to get screwed in the transaction. So stable coins are the obvious solution here. We're really excited to explore integrating stable coins into our application and using that uh, for purchases, as well as partners who want to use their own tokens um, as a payment token on the platform. Another problem or another friction point we have is gas costs. This is particularly challenging when we talk about serving the unbanked. If you're living in some emerging market, you have a cell phone, you have a good or service that you're ready to sell, but how do you get your first tiny bit of Ethereum to even be able to post that on a network? These are, this is a, a, a huge friction point for anyone who's new to crypto. How do we get them onboarded? How do we address this problem, of that cold start problem of getting them set up and ready to go? Wallets are also just like really hard to use to the average user. What do you mean I have to back up my private key? What is a private key? How do I reset my password? These are the types of questions that are a challenge for not just Origin, but for everyone in this industry. We have to figure out paradigms that make sense to the average user if we want to be able to get mainstream adoption. We also have this really unfamiliar paradigm. Right? We're used to going into a coffee shop, we swipe our credit card, and we know right away whether or not it worked or not. Well, on the blockchain, you're sitting around waiting for confirmations of what? How many do you need? Five, six, seven, eight? How many is enough? And how do you present that in the UI to let the user know it probably went through? On the other side, you also have faster finality with cryptocurrency than you have with a credit card. So in a credit card, I've got months where I can change my mind and I can issue a chargeback. But in blockchain world, after a certain number of confirmations, it gets more and more unlikely that that transaction will ever be reversed. And so these are really hard challenges from a usability standpoint of how do you convey these, co these concepts to people who may not be familiar uh, with thinking about it this way. And finally, search is really hard. Uh, this is one of the reasons we're excited about the work that the graph is doing and thinking about how we can have search on the blockchain in a decentralized way. For us, it, obviously, uh, for buyers and sellers, they need to be able to have a way to find listings that are interesting to them. And so search is important, but it's really important to us that we keep this decentralized and that it's not a single point of failure because of those four reasons that we talked about earlier. So I want to tell you a little bit about how we're doing things at Origin. We're 100% open source, and all of the work that we do is done in public. So a lot of teams in this space are open source, right? But far less are open in the way that they collaborate. And so our entire team, we all work in public. You can, everyone is welcome to join our Discord where you can work Side by side with our engineering team, all of our meeting notes are public. Uh, we have a weekly hangout where anyone in the world is welcome to join us. I and mean, I'd love for any of you who are interested in, in seeing how this type of technology is made, come check it out at Origin. Uh, we'd love to share more about what we're doing and have you involved in building this future with us, decentralized marketplaces on the blockchain. Thank you so much. That's all I have. <laughs>